Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Vegas, everybody. This is day three of our coverage of HPE Discover 2016. This is our sixth year covering uh, HP, now HPE. We've been documenting the evolution, the transition, the acceleration now of HP's business. Vish Malshan is back, he runs product management for HP Storage, and Mohit Bhatnagar is here. He's the Vice President of Products at Cluster HQ. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank Thanks, you Dave. Our pleasure. So tell us about Cluster HQ, relatively you know, new company, just got yeah. some financing earlier this year on top of some earlier financing, so you guys sure. are hitting your stride now. What's going Absolutely. on with the company? Yeah, so we are a startup. We are uh, very passionate about delivering the whole vision of containers uh, to enterprises. Uh, as we know, that containers have been uh, the soul of what, how Google delivers their technology. Uh, what most people don't realize is that every time we are using our Gmail or doing some kind of search, uh, you know, Google is firing up containers. In fact, one of the releases came two billion containers per week. But what we are saying is that same vision uh, can be brought into enterprises. And that's what we are passionate about. Uh, Cluster HQ, we are funded, well funded. We are building, uh, I think, one of the uh, world's best team, uh, which understands the old stack, you know, the VMware, HP, and the whole L thing, as well as the new stack, the DevOps, microservices, uh, public cloud, hybrid cloud infrastructure. Um, so that's where, what we are doing. And our focus is on data management part of it. The number of problems and containers that needs to be addressed, and we are saying, you know what, let's solve the data management problem. Okay, and then Vish, you, you and I have talked about containers, but of course containers have been around for a long time. Anybody who you know, you yes. know, studied Linux you know, yes. knows that containers were there, and all of a sudden there's a resurgence. So what's your angle? Why does 3PAR, HP storage, HP storage care? So Dave, I think you're seeing um, an emergence of what we call this new application paradigm, right? And um, we're hearing that as, they, as customers develop these new applications, they're looking for hyperscale, they're looking for uh, cost advantages, they're looking for latency and performance advantages, and so this is a new method for developing those applications. Yet we also hear that you know, um, persistence of storage is a key element, especially as you develop containers in one environment and want to maybe uh, deploy it in a secure, encrypted environment, or you, know, you may want to deploy it on an OWL flash environment. And so as, as Moet indicated, right, I mean, you know, uh, like we had very close integration when we had the era of server virtualization, uh, this new era of containers in the x86 space, I think, brings open another new opportunity, new frontier for us to go look at. So, Mohit, talk about the problem you guys are solving, because right. of course, we, we understood well the, the, the server issue and virtualization helped right. solve that, and we sort of tried to push that into applications. Right. Didn't, wasn't really the perfect fit, but right. talk about the problem that, that you guys right. are solving. Yeah, so let's talk about real quickly why containers, because if you understand that, then I think we can talk about the problems right. that we need to solve. So, most of us lived, started our life at one point or other, we deployed things which were bare metal. Uh, v, uh, VM technology allowed us to get much higher efficiency, et cetera. Uh, containers in that sense uh, takes it one step further. Essentially what's happening, unlike a virtual machine which requires a host operating system, it's kind of a lot of uh, libs, et cetera, get loaded. Containers has shared uh, operating systems, so it becomes much lighter weight. But what does it mean? It means that you have now much higher density, so you can get container density, which could be 10 times higher than that of a virtual machine density. Secondly, because it's lightweight, you can spin up very fast, so which means when you want to spin up a large number of compute resources, you can spin up containers. Well, one of the problems that happened with containers were if you have workloads which are stateless, where something is done and a call is made outside the container and the state is not critical, you know what, container dies, it dies. Well, we looked at it and we said, wait a second, you're looking at solving a global problem. You want to go and build a unified cloud infrastructure. Why don't we actually enable state persistence into containers? And that's where Cluster HQ came. In DockerCon last year, uh, we made a contribution with the concept of volume plugin came. And since then, we have done a number of things where, for example, using uh, HP 3PAR systems, we can take all the goodness of HP 3PAR, high performance, all flash, reliability, disaster recovery, stability, SSD level encryption, and on top of that, we can enable any kind of container-based workload, which means whether it is Oracle, SQL, or the new generation database services, uh, such as MongoDB, or Radius, or Elasticsearch, or Cassandra. Across the board, we can deploy these stateful containers. The beauty of this is that organizations now can make an investment 
which is whether it is a bare metal deployments or container deployments or virtual machine deployments, and using technology which is a combination of our product Flocker, which is a volume manager, uh, which works with HPE's product, uh, organizations can uh, adopt the container-based workloads. So how did the relationship come about, this partnership, Vish? I mean, we see Docker you know, on stage this week, you know, several years after Docker comes to prominence. Okay, that makes sense, right? Now, right. They, they've proven themselves, and now, okay, right. we're going to put them to the HTTP distribution uh, channel. This is different. You guys are early on in the game. Why? What, what did you well, see? I mean, I, I tell you, the Flocker, Flocker has announced um, uh, the availability of joint solutions actually six months ago, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, through the uh, marriage of OpenStack, Cinder drivers, and Flocker, we were able to bring that sort of class of persistence uh, to the environment. So you know, I think we found a common intersection. Um, you know, Mo, it was indicating to me that as these customers were developing, they got stuck in trying to get into production, especially as they're moving into IT. And and you know, you have three power on the floor, you have store virtual on the floor, for example. And so we found that was an intersection point here that we could, we could, we could participate together. So Mo, why three par? Why did you guys, you know, focus on three par? So, look, the space uh, is is going to have heterogeneity. So it's inevitable. And I think there are going to be other systems. People might use AWS or something. But when we look at it, what are the problems enterprise customers are going to solve? Uh, containers is an interesting part of the equation. So obviously from a DevOps, microservices architecture point of view, almost every Fortune 1000 company is going to adopt containers. But that doesn't mitigate all the other requirements they have. They still need, as I said, HA, disaster recovery, encryption, reliability, backup, and all of those things. So we looked at it and we say, who are the companies that, that actually understands that? So that was one part of it. The second part of it, that enterprise, as Meg talked about, is that they're going to solve these problems across the stack. So the hybrid cloud is a reality, right? So we said, which are the organizations which actually are going to deliver and solution that will solve those problems? So for us, 3 part became a very good choice. And frankly, I'm a storage guy myself. So when I look at it and I say, which is a system that has a range of capabilities, yeah, there are other choices, but I think 3 par is a fantastic track record, and I think it is something which could be, become a dominant technology in this space, so that was our motivation. Well, the storage business is changing pretty dramatically. Yeah. I mean, you guys have both been in the business for a while. It used to be, okay, I buy EMC for block, and I buy NetApp for file. Right. Next Doesn't question, work. right? Yeah. That, right? That's changed yeah, indeed. pretty significantly, Absolutely. hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're seeing the emergence of Flash clearly as one. But they're still pretty much in the system-defined space. You're seeing the emergence of software-defined storage as well, right? And then you're also seeing the marriage of both, right? Because I don't think it's an either-or. And I think there are spaces where customers are going to say, look, I have mission-critical mainstream applications that I want to develop one way. I have cloud-native applications that I want to develop another way and deploy another way, perhaps, right? And then you're going to see maybe some bridging between the two, right? Uh, as, as they deploy and they have specific requirements. And as, as Mohit pointed out, right, if you look at the, the three legs that we always talked about, Dave, the, the performance, affordability, enterprise class data services, you know, I view this Flocker, Docker integration as part of that enterprise data services, right? Because there's a big intersection with uh, reliability, whether it's replication, priority optimization. If you want to apply QoS type rules, um, you know, those are the kinds of things that they shouldn't have to go reinvent again, right? right? And if you uh, draw a parallel, VMware, when they did um, their replications, they, they built this model with uh, Site Recovery Manager and Site Recovery Adapters, right? And right. I think they very intelligently leveraged the ecosystem for replication. So I think it's a similar model here. Right. And there's a gestalt going on. I mean, Benioff got it right when he said that there are going to be more SaaS companies outside of the technology than there are inside the right. technology business. And so everybody's becoming a software company. Absolutely. It's all about building platforms, APIs, agility, so the DevOps thing is taking off. Spot on, it's spot on. So let me give you a real life example. We have a customer, uh, these guys, about a year and a half back, used to do application development, deploy maybe once in four months, monolithic application, you'll say that's pretty good. Well, it started going to microservices architecture broke down the entire monolithic application, start doing deployment once a week, 10, week, 10 deployments per week, currently 40, 45 deployments per week with a goal of 100 deployments per week. <laughs> now this is a company, this is not a Fortune 10 company which had through all kinds of resources. This is a startup. Now what this is giving them is that their DevOps guys are able to go, their developers are able to come up with ideas, implement fast. Now if I'm a talk to the CIO of that company, 
he want to abstract away the entire infrastructure from the developers guys. And that's where the fact that they can take a three-part kind of system and say, I give the enterprise class reliability. I deploy a container-centric workload, which gives me the fast performance and density. And by the way, if I do an application development which is in public cloud, and then eventually I need to bring it to on-premise, I can also do that. So I think these flexibility are, a lot of these are driven by forces, which are application development accelerated cycle, the need for uh, cloud-based instances. And that's where I think the combination of what new stack like ours is doing with the capabilities like 3 Power becomes very attractive. Well, and the other major thing about developer productivity that I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on is data access and data sharing, mm -hmm. right? Being able to, let's say through Flash, be able to share copies of data that are yeah. current right. instead of, so N minus one. We, we've all been through it. You're looking Absolutely. at a development project, oh, well, geez, I wish I could see that with yeah. some more current data. Yeah. Ipsum lorem. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. How is that affecting and changing the developer mindset and the productivity? Want to answer yeah, that? sure, let me start there first and then I know more you've got some perspectives there as well. So clearly, um, making sure that you can replicate as close as possible to the production environment with production type data, is a, I think is a big requirement for development, right? I think they often struggle with, they can really never replicate the production environment, or it's not a cost effective to replicate the, the production environment. And so, you know, Flash changes some of that because now, again, you have enough performance headroom, you have software capabilities to make copies effectively, um, and then you can put priority controls around that to ensure that if I'm developing on a production system that I don't ever impact the production performance levels, right? So guardrails. So I think, you know, married now with, with maybe some of the concepts that Moe is going to talk about with, uh, with data, I think there's an interesting intersection here with, uh, with DevOps. Right, so we are super excited about the fact that um, while data has gravity, um, data can also have a temporal aspect to it. So the notion of snapshots in the past was a linear snapshots were taken. They were typically taken for disaster recovery kind of reason. Well, imagine, um, uh, just like you have GitHub for code, what if you have Git for data? What if along with the code, I can capture the state of data? I can give you a full graph of it. People can go, they can look at a particular snapshot, they can clone it, they can create a branch on it, they can merge that branch into something else. They can, if you can do that, suddenly right. it creates an architecture where microservices are no longer doing development in isolation of each other. They can almost have a Git for data, which is a common repository of data where things can be pushed and pulled. So that's a concept which we feel could be very powerful vision and we are working towards it. The beauty is what you said earlier, because of efficiency of snapshotting, because of flash that it does not have the impact on it, you can actually truly create these copies. And then you combine this temporal aspect of snapshotting with the, uh, the spatial aspect of snapshot. I can move them across the clouds. And if I can do that, suddenly we have taken care of the data movement in a very efficient manner, as well across time, as well as space. And I love this Git for data sort of metaphor, because yeah. then there's a monetization model behind Absolutely. it where you're selling tooling on right. top of that. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. Beautiful. All right, we have to leave it there, but I'll give you guys each a sort of last word. Mohit, what's your takeaways from uh, Discover 2016? I, I've, look, I've been in the industry 20 years. This is one of the best shows. I Congratulations to HPE team. I think they've done it. I can feel energy around it. Uh, what I also like is that uh, instead of just saying, here is a product, here is a product, HP is stepping up and saying, look, we solved your problem in a holistic manner. So we are super excited about this partnership. Uh, my message to our customers and HP's customers is that be bold, containers is a new territory, but those of us who have been in the industry a long time, we take this stuff seriously, we are delivering uh, enterprise class solutions. So come along with us and we'll be with you during the journey. Great, and Vish, uh, you came over from 3PAR, Yes. Uh, very exciting company. When I got back into the business a while back, somebody said, what? look at 3PAR, they're the, they're the next big thing. This was quite, a, quite some time ago. Brought that to HP, transformed that architecture to, to, to an all flash array without having to buy yes. you know, another company. Yes. That's got to feel really good. So, tremendous success, growth. You're now number one, at least for a little while, <laughs> until right. that merger until goes, that merge through. goes through. Unless you're going to buy NetApp, I joked, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, won't happen. <laughs> Don't write that. Starting right. dreamers. So give us. Yeah, right. All right. So give us. Are you feeling good? Spring in the step. Give us the drop. Drop the mic. Quote. What's happening? You know, as you exit HPE Discover 16. Yeah. So Dave, I think staying focused on customers, staying focused on innovation, and making sure that we can deliver a value proposition, making a difference. That's what we stand for, right? And I think we want to continue to ensure that we can make that difference for our customers. Excellent. All right. Well, the cube hopefully making a difference and bringing you all the signal. 
at HPE Discover 2016. Keep right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate Great. it. Thank you very much. Good.